mystery, I like a sister, see that's what I'm talking about. Our wedding song will be ebony and ivory, and we'll sing Christmas carols round the old Kwanzaa tree. But color is not the issue here, it's dignity, it's class, it's all about her heart. Okay, it's partly about that ass. I want me some black girls, a brown girl, a cafe au lait. Oh, caramel girls and mocha girls, just blow me away. If you're a honky, you're singing the wrong key, it's the honest truth. The skin that she's dwelling in must contain melanin, that is the fountain of you. Thomas Jefferson. Robert De Niro. David Bowie. To a certain extent. That dancer. Supporters is AstroRadio.net. Pretty good show today. We're going to talk about uh, Greg Norman, a little bit of golf. I'm going to weigh in, let you know what I think about Brett Favre, and uh, and I got to stick up for fantasy football a little bit. We've been slighted, us fantasy football geeks. I got to stick up for us. Somebody does. Uh, plus, gang signs and Michelle Wee. Right after this, hang out, Athletic Supporters. <laughs> this is. I truly appreciate the opportunity. As they say, all good things must come, come to an end. You know, it can only put it in song. My breath farms back and your defense is in trouble. Hey now, hey now, my breath farms back. Boom. <laughs> I just started Thanksgiving early. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's do this. What do you say? I'm ready if you are. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the program. I am Eric Pedigo, your host. You are listening to the Athletic Supporters. DisasterRadio.net. My my pleasure being here with you. I, I mean, what else can I really say about it? I, it is, I am literally thrilled just to be here hanging out with you today. Um, I apologize about last week. I was not here last week. If you are a regular listener of the show or if you are trying to hear for the first time, 
and you tuned in and were sadly disappointed to not hear my deep, manly, uh, calming, soothing voice. I apologize. I was actually playing in the Gus Macker basketball tournament. It came here to Springfield, Illinois, and uh, and I got a team together and played in it. I not you know I'm not just an athletic support. I'm, I mean I'm an athlete. I play. I don't just talk about them. I do it. You know, I don't just talk, I do. I play. I, and it was 150 degrees outside. I, I about collapsed. But uh, I'll let you guys know a little bit about that. You know, a little later we'll do the catch up on what I've been up to. Uh, I, also, I saw the new Batman yesterday. I saw Dark Knight yesterday. Awesome movie. Great movie. See it. You'll love it. I'm serious. I, see it. Anyhow, we'll, we'll talk about all that a little later. We're going to do sports. Elwood says he went and saw the Hulk last night. Elwood in our chat room. I want to see that, too. Um, but here's what I want to get into first. Absolute, uh, just right off the bat, I want to get into this. All right? You know, if, if you listen to the show, if you ever hear me, you know that I don't consider golf a real sport. I just don't. I never have. I, it's, it's not a real sport. It's not an actual sport. It's considered a sport because, uh, you know, it, we see it on ESPN. So people all of a sudden think it's, a, it's not a sport. It's no more a sport than poker, than bowling, uh, you know, tiddlywinks. It, it's no more a sport than any of these things. It's just not. And Greg Norman, the shack, helped prove my point over the weekend. Now, Greg Norman, a little info here. I'll give you everything I know about him. He's 53 years old, and he once was one of the top golfers in the world back in his prime. I believe, though, he – wasn't he the guy that always choked away the leads and, and never could win the big one? I think he has, a, he has a few major victories, but didn't he choke away a bunch more? Wasn't that kind of what he was, what he was known for? Is that the shark? That's, I mean, that's what I, that's, that's what I thought. Anyhow, Greg Norman, 53 years old, uh, this past weekend, uh, signs up for the British Open, makes the cut, I guess you could say, and all weekend long, he is right near the front, right at the front of the list. He's leading a little bit, he's a stroke behind, he's in second, he's, and it was a huge story. I, I listen to a lot, a lot of sports talk radio. Now, I just bought a new Saturn Outlook, which is out in the parking lot of the studio right now, and it is a gorgeous, beautiful uh, gangster pimp mobile, and it comes with, uh, with XM for a year. So I listen, I, I have like 30 sports stations on there, and I'm constantly flipping through, trying to suck in all the sports knowledge I can possibly contain. And you know what? Over the weekend, it, there just wasn't much going on. See, here's... Here's the problem with doing a sports show, all right? And this is something I learned a while ago. It's not, there's not always material. To, I mean, you can do, if, you know, if I just do a basic topical show about things that are going on, current events, things like that, you can never run out of things to talk about. All right, I can come in, we could come in and talk government, we could come in and talk, you know, gas prices, uh, reality TV, you can talk about anything. If you just do a, a basic, a, you know, a recent events kind of a, a show. When you do a sports show, it's different. It's not so easy. There's not always interesting, intriguing things to talk about. And it just it happens at, at certain times of year. All right? And this is a time of year when there is literally nothing to talk about. You can talk about baseball. And don't get me wrong, I know I bang on baseball a lot, but this is when baseball starts getting good. It is starting to get good and interesting now. All right, but it's still, it's, it can't carry a whole show. Come on, be honest. If I came in here and just talked MLB for two straight hours, you guys would turn on, you'd, you'd turn it off. I would tune out. I would start getting lost in my own conversation and, and doze off, perhaps. Who knows? 